All right, John, I see this uh, lovely little build you got here in front of us. Can you tell us just like what was the philosophy on this rifle going into it? Yeah, so I wanted to build something that I wouldn't ever have to think about. I could just pick it up and it would work. So I put more money than I should have in places that probably didn't need it, but it works. I think I heard you earlier describe it as your apocalypse rifle. How true do you think that holds? Yeah, I mean, I think this is what I would grab in any any situation where I would need a gun. <laughs> okay, so let's start out. Uh, what was the budget going into this? I didn't have one. Didn't have a budget. How, did you in your at least if you had a budget in mind? Did you think you went over or under the budget in the long run? I spent more than I thought I would. <laughs> well over budget. Well, I spent a lot more than I thought I would, but I didn't have like a number that it had to stay under. Okay. Okay. All right, so let's start with the, the back end of the rifle. Uh, I noticed you have a... It's not a rifle. You have a pistol, John, okay? <laughs> ATF fuckery aside. You have a, a pistol brace. Tell us a little bit about the pistol brace. Yeah, so that just keeps me from being a felon. <laughs> Very good point. Who makes it? Uh, it's SB Tactical. SB4? Uh, it's an SBA3. Okay, okay. How is it? Comfort? Weight? The, um... So this is the second one I've had. The first one had the basic um, like SB tack strap and when I was pulling that out to replace it with this one I actually ripped the rubber on my brace and broke it <laughs> but SB tack I emailed them they let me send it back and they sent me a new one for free they covered shipping and everything nice and I had it back within the week nice um, but with the original one the rubber has a lot of flex to it and so with this strap, it's just a little stiffer. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't bend around and rip. Sweet. And other things like, you know, maybe occasionally theoretically shouldering it more easily. <laughs> uh, you mentioned you had an H2 buffer in there. Yep. And it shoots super soft. Yep. Yeah, I think that's one thing that really gets left out a lot. Like, granted, if you have a wide open gas port, it, it's gonna be reliable even if you stuff mud into the receiver. You're just gonna have enough gas to like, blow anything out of there right but on the other hand you're going to run into park parts breakage very fast like yeah like my first 16 inch carbine build i was going through gas rings almost like money on ammo you know i've just never bought a gas ring <laughs> and it shoots, super, shoots super soft according to you you know very very good ejection yeah so um, like luke in the last video has the 16 inch build and it recoils significantly harder than this one and it's got the same length of gas block, same buffer. Yeah, yeah, same same buffer. They're both H twos, and they're they're not adjustable gas blocks. They must have just like drilled his like twice the original size. Yeah, his Ridiculous. is uh, his is stretched a little bit, blown out. Yeah. All right, uh, tell us about the lower receiver. I noticed you have some quality of life enhancements over like the more basic lower receiver build kits. Just tell us a little bit about that, what was was going on in your mind. Yeah, so I wanted ambidextrous controls, but I didn't want to spend the stupid money on a fully ambi lower. Um, so it's just a basic aero precision lower with talon safety selectors, they're a 45 degree throw, and a bad lever. What was the thought behind the bad lever? Because I've seen them poo-pooed on a lot by uh, internet commandos. They say they're ND levers. How has, how has it been in your experience? I've not had that issue with it. It's never gotten in the way of the trigger. I've never hit it by, hit, hit it by mistake. Um, I started a little bit there. Um, I've never had any issues with it. Honestly, it makes... I think my reload times are faster with it because I can just hit it with my trigger finger. Um, it gets me back on target. We can edit out the stutter if you want. I don't care. Okay, so all right, uh, tr uh, trigger is a LaRue MBTS2 right, or whatever. Yeah, I you gave did. you that trigger, and uh, I noted it. It's really good. Yeah. It's really good. It saved me like 100 bucks on my build. Yeah, it's <laughs> a really good trigger. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, now I went with a BCM Mod 3 pistol grip. I went with a Magpul Myad. Is that right? No, that's BCM. That's a, it says Magpul pistol. It's Magpul. Oh, the pistol grip. I was yeah, looking at the core grip. grip. Sorry. No, no, That's a K2. Grip. K2 and works good. Very comfortable. Yeah. The uh, texturing is good. The grip angle is good. And it has a little pod within the grip that holds spare batteries for my light. Frankly, though, 
we'll talk about the the light and the optic later. I assume you've never needed different batteries for the site. No, I've never changed batteries on the site. Okay, let's move on then. Let's segue on to the upper receiver. Uh, right away, I noticed you have a Raptor uh, charging handle. Yep. Raptor LT. Yep. And I assume, like just like me and Lucas, you say you absolutely love the Raptor love design. Love it. No complaints. And I've, I've said this before. I think charging handles generally are not worth the money that they command. However, they are pretty nice for a couple of different reasons. First of all, that you've got you know a better ability to you know one hand to handle. It's got a bigger area you can more to grab. Easily actuated, right, you can for grab sure. it. Yeah, absolutely. Instead of just a latch on the handle, the whole charging handle is a charging handle. You can just yeah. grab the whole freaking thing if you want. It's worth the upcharge. Yeah, and they wear in really nice. I'm sure you noticed, like at first, it smelled oh, yeah, it's like slicker and it's not. Yeah, yeah, it's <sighs> it's great. It smelled like burning hair for like the first few hundred rounds when it was really getting broken. I did. Whenever I first built the upper, I just sat and watched TV and just. Racked it a few hundred. Just racked it <laughs> for like hours on end. Yeah. Uh, Magpul Pro sights. Yep. I assume you absolutely love them. No complaints. Yeah, they're I've great, used they're them great once. sights. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of having to come to Jesus moment about iron sights. I really, I, I, I don't like absolute co-witness iron sights anymore. I just don't. Yeah. But I understand why. You said, you said it's an apocalypse rifle. You want it to run absolutely, and even if somehow... The MRO broke, which is not like realistic. Even if it somehow broke, you have your backup sights. Yeah, if it breaks, it's on a QD mount. I can pull it off and flip out the backups. If the battery dies, because I don't have spare batteries on the rifle for the optic, so it's like a five-year battery life, um, then I can flip up the optic or the irons. But I mean, it's an absolute co-witness, right? Yeah, I would just flip up the irons and shoot through the glass in an emergency. Yeah, in order yeah, to unless the glass broke. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, I'll probably never use them. I didn't even, even to uh, like sight them in, I didn't shoot with them. I sighted in the red dot and then adjusted the irons to match the dot mm. and then confirmed that it was actually zero to yeah. then flip them back down and haven't used them since. Yeah, pretty much what I did with my EOTech once I got the rise and I'm like, to hell with this. Let me, I need to pause this real quick. Before we move on to the bolt carrier group, I wanted to spend a moment talking about the optic because it seems like it's something you're really proud of. And granted, Trigicon makes some really good, really good optics. Yeah, I like it a lot. Uh, you have the MRO Gen mm -hmm. 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hear a lot of negative things about the optical clarity of the Gen 2. And I looked through it at first, and I didn't notice anything really to be bad about it. We, we noticed that if you looked at something that was stark white, like a building sidewall, you would notice there's tint. Yeah, you look at this wall up close and you'll notice the blue tint. But if you're looking at literally anything else at any kind of distance, and you don't really notice it. Especially if you shoot with both eyes open, which yeah. is how you should. If you don't, you're a troglodyte. Uh, the Scalar Works Leap Mount, you, you've said it, it's super light. It, granted, it's, it's expensive. It weighs like nothing, but- One and a half ounces, I think. Um, and it, I bought it with the optic, so I got a decent deal. The optic and the mount together were like $4.99. Yeah, that's pretty good. This was 2018? Yeah, like yeah. late 2018, I think. And they're, you're going for about that price now, so I wouldn't say you did too bad. And that was direct from Scalar Works. They sold the bundle. I, I mean, I, I think I heard you say honestly, the the, the some of the eight point offerings could be better. Yeah, I think that the Pro would be a is probably a better optic in general. Um, but a Pro one, the stock mount mount is obnoxious and heavy. Um, and it just it has like that knob that extrudes off the side. Um, it's just annoying, but I went with this because this with the scalar works mount versus the pro with a scalar works mount came in at about the same price. And this is significantly lighter than the 30 millimeter tube. That's true. That's absolutely true. And to be fair, this is, this is far from the worst choice for life in apocalypse. Because if you think about it. What's going to be your big issue if you are, let's just say you're, for some reason, you're surviving for like two years at a time with weight matters, no real weight resupply. It's weight and battery batteries. life. Absolutely. It's battery life. And the MRO, you know, has some flaws, but one of them is absolutely not weight or battery life. Exactly. It does amazingly in those two respects. Exactly. And you said that we're not going to flip it over this time like we did for Lucas's build. You said this is a tool craft nitride bolt. 
Yep. They're they're good. They're actually really good. I, I bought one for eighty dollars back in twenty seventeen. They're excellent. Yeah, I think I, I changed gas rings once, but that was because it was super over gassed. Other than that, flawless. I think mine was like eighty nine ninety nine or something like that. You got it off Brownhouse. Uh, no, from Armor Ally or Primary Arms. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I think we both got together, that part. Almost everything on this came from Armor Ally or Primary Arms. <laughs> it's a good site. Yeah, I like them. Uh, it's too bad, really, with COVID, the prices have skyrocketed. You know, Especially on Armor Ally, though, I've noticed. It seems to have gotten way more expensive. They were generally the best deal on most things. Now, uh, is is that the M4E1 upper receiver, or is that like the, with a proprietary barrel nut, or is that a just a standard... It's an M4E1 upper. So that is a uh, arrow handguard, and that uh, yeah, that's the S1. S1, okay. Now the S1 handguard, uh, you know, it's got M-lock, mm -hmm. very basic requirements. Got you know, Picatinny at the very front end. Do you think that you know, maybe way off in the future, or for other people who have builds, or maybe they need a, I don't want to say need, but maybe they want to mount. Uh, night vision illuminator or yeah if i was ever laser? if i was ever gonna run nods i would want the full rail um or even if like you want a pressure switch or something for your light you need the full rail um but i'm happy with just the tail cap and i don't really need that rail space and without the rail space i think my hand fits more comfortably around the handguard mm -hmm. with this setup since i don't need the rail space i'd rather not have it and it looks super lightweight very inexpensive yeah yeah, and that's and that's one of the advantages. If you get a rail with that much negative space, you know, even compared to super high end rail with uh, a, a full length of Picatinny rail on the top, it's going to be kind of heavy. Yeah. Like even the Geisley, which I have on my rifle, that's very light for a full length Picatinny. It's 15 inch rail. It's 13 ounces. With this kind of rail that has a lot of negative space, no rail. That is to say, you have a much smaller uh, weight for the price. It's much more efficient, much more value oriented. Yeah. Did you mention who you got the barrel from? Uh, the barrel is Ballistic Advantage, it's Arrow. And how uh, have you benched it? How's it been shooting? So I've never really benched it. The closest I've come to benching it was laying prone in the bed of my truck and propping it up on a spare tire. Like a true southerner. Um, and I only was shooting it at about 60 yards, but I was getting roughly an inch group at 60. Really, with one ammo? With a uh, Federal M193. Wow. I mean, granted, I've got an inch and a half groups so of the Bear Creek with, uh, with Wolf Gold, but that was like a once in a lifetime thing. It was generally a two and a half for the MOA. Anyway, uh, government profile. Yep. Fixed gas block. Yep. Does that ship as a package deal? Yep. Yeah, I bought the upper complete. And you said it's it's super soft shooting. Yeah, so it's clearly fantastic. I mean, at least before COVID, Ballistic Advantage was properly gassing their barrels for 5.56 spec ammo. Yeah, I have zero complaints. That's that's excellent. Um, again, it's not just a matter of split times. It's about long-term parts wear and reliability. Yeah, spare parts and warranties do you great until the failure happens in a gunfight. That's a very good point. <laughs> that's very good. I mean, guys all the time like, yeah, but this company has a great warranty. You know, warranty can't save your life. The warranty is only good as long as the company exists. If everyone has been eaten by zombies, that's not a very good. That's not or, a very good I mean, selling even, point. Even like people will talk about that with like Taurus handguns and stuff. High and points, high points, whatever you know. And you know, if that's what you can afford, that's great. Like, it's better than a sharp stick. But you don't. That's not a point of bragging for the warranty. Because again, like that failure happens in the range, no big deal. But you draw the gun and you need it to work, and it doesn't. Your warranty is not helping you. No. And, and, and hey, there are some high-end companies that have really terrible customer service. Yep. We'll talk about cry precision at some point. But a great warranty on a subpar gun yeah. kind of doesn't mean it's better than a actually good quality gun that you have to hassle their customer service to get spare parts for. Yeah. I'd rather a crap warranty that I never use yeah. than a good warranty I need regularly. Uh, the light setup. Yep. You have a Surefire M300. Yep. And I assume it's absolutely perfect. Yep. No, no flickering. Nope. Lucas had a lot of issues with his Enforce. Yep. 
Uh, I'm sure that the the, uh, the mount that his Inforce is on, I bought because I initially was going to buy Inforce. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm spending the money to make this thing bomb-proof. Yeah. And so I gave him the mount, and then I bought the Surefire. I'll give him my stream light eventually. I'll, I'll just put a, a, a cloud, or not a cloud, excuse me, a mod light. You should get a cloud. Maybe I should get a cloud, <laughs> because honestly, it's going on a 5-inch 300 blackout. Am I really going to be doing, like, 600-yard shots? Like, yeah. lighting up a hog 600 they're, yards away? They're, um, their rifle lights are pretty top tier. Mod light or cloud? Cloud. Yeah, cloud. They're they're putting out a new pistol light soon that's supposed to get like forty five thousand candela. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean like it's absurd. Fair, to be fair, I've done hard yard shots with a eleven thousand candela pistol light. It, it I mean I, I think my, my X three hundred I think my thousand lumen X three hundred gets like twelve thousand can candela. So yeah. they're putting forty five thousand in a pistol light. That's, that's like, absurdly bright. That's like three hundred yards. But how far? How how often you do three hundred yard pistol shots? Never. Yeah, exactly. Never. But what I'm saying is, if you want a mod light for the extra brightness, I think cloud cloud can match it. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And you don't have to deal with mod light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is that is that is good. Uh, okay, so one one thing I wanted to touch on. Oh, I almost completely forgot. The paint job, you did this apparently just completely on your own. Yep. Where did you get the inspiration for this paint job? I watched a lot of YouTube videos. Garantham, right? I watched Garantham and several others. I, yeah. It looks really good. It does. It looks really, really good. And it's worn naturally on its own. Yeah. And it looks really good. Yeah. I like it a lot. Unlike uh, some people on YouTube, I know for certain this one wasn't dragged behind a truck. It looks, it looks really natural and, uh, and quite nice on its own. Uh, one thing I did want to touch on was the weight. Yep. Uh, weighed eight, uh, eight point like, two pounds. Yeah, loaded. just over eight pounds. Loaded. Um, that struck me as kind of chunky for a eleven and a half inch. I'm not saying that's like bad because frankly that's a perfectly acceptable weight for a rifle. That's very maneuverable, but it struck me as like a little bit chunky. Do you think like your part selection had anything to do with that? Oh, um, honestly, I don't know what I would have done that was lighter. I mean, unless you start getting into crazy things like lightweight bolt carriers, or I guess a lighter weight barrel profile, but... Yeah, lighter weight barrel profile is probably one of the first things I would have looked at. Yeah, because it's a government profile barrel. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, it's a little heavy, but I don't know if there's a lot I could do to cut a meaningful amount of weight. Yeah. And even if I did, I think it's very well balanced. As oh it yeah, is. I know like it handles right super away. well. It doesn't feel like it's it over feels eight pounds. like at most like it weighs seven pounds. Yeah, that is not a weight that you would notice until you had been walking with it for quite some distance. Like you're patrolling either a WMA or private land, yeah. and you're going, you're walking miles and miles, you wouldn't notice it. Do you have any closing thoughts? Like, what would you uh, change? What would you if it, what would you change in the future? But if you had to start over, what would you change? Oh, um, that's a good question. I think I like the eleven and a half inch barrel length, but with things going on in politics as they are, it makes me a little bit nervous. Um, like I've helped a couple of buddies build ARs since, and I've pushed them towards fourteen and a half or sixteen inch barrels just to not have to deal with. The constant snafu with pistol braces. Anything else you would change going going forward? I mean, if you had to start over, would you change anything else? Yeah. Um, the only thing that I would change is what I've already changed. Is I originally had an umbrella corp grip, which I really liked the grip, but the extra battery storage was worth the change. Um, yeah. No. Everything that I've wanted to change since I built it, I have changed. I have zero complaints with this. The only thing that bothers me is the potential for issues with the barrel length. Oh okay. I love it. Uh, and I had a, you know, like a 30 second talk about things I would change when I, inter when I interviewed Lucas a few days ago. And I'll say this, I really don't have too much to say about the gun. Like, right? Uh, I would go with a longer light. I would go with the, the 18650 Surefires just because, yeah, it's like an ounce and a half, two ounces heavier, but I get more runtime with a longer battery. I yep. get a little more throw. Uh, yeah, I could get the like the M600 or the uh, Cloud Rain um, or whatever. But I figure the way this thing's not set up for any kind of long range. Um, yeah, I this is a 300-yard rifle. 
Yeah, I, at most. I built this with like a 200 yard max range in mind. Um, like, could it push a little further? Sure. I don't know if I'm capable of pushing it any further, but I think that's plenty of light for anything I would ever do with this particular setup. Other than that, I mean, I, I gotta say the, the it's just it's it's really good. It's refreshing to see, you know, where I see constantly. I see on, you know, various let's just call them boards. I see guys with toy parts. They they want to just look cool. They've got like red charging handles. They've got airsoft tier components. They really skimped out on places they shouldn't have either in their optics, their lights, their barrel quality, their trigger. I mean, for goodness sake, if you're going to build a rifle. Most of your accuracy comes from your choice of ammo, your choice, your quality of barrier, your quality of trigger, your quality of optic, and finally, your quality as a shooter. Your quality as a shooter, probably most significant of those. Yeah. But at the same time, it doesn't matter how good of a shooter you are if you have a total pile of shit barrel with like ammo you recovered from the bottom of a lake. Yeah, four MOA rifle is a four MOA rifle, no matter who shoots it. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I can't, other than going with a longer light and maybe going with a thinner profile barrel if I, if I knew that I would never get in like a heated fight, I would change nothing on this rifle. It's, it's great. Um, now, I take that back. I would, get a, I would get a 1.93 mount for the scale <laughs> so I can shoot it under night vision, but John isn't shooting under night vision, so for his I, I will case, never in my life have the money for nods. Okay, well then, I would not change it if I were in his position. I would, but not for his not for his sake. I think it's great the way he has this gun set up. It balances well. It's realistic. He's got money where it needs to be. I love it. I love it. I really can't talk it up enough. It's great. And that was built. I do have to dog you for one thing though. What's that? Burn that sling. No, I like that sling. Burn that sling. I get it's multicam black. All right, I went through a phase, but it's a really nice sling. <laughs> Uh, this is the Magpul MS4, MS4, right? The sling? Yeah. No, it's not a Magpul. It's um, it's a Faro, really? Faro Concepts. Um, it's a different tab on there. It originally had like a paracord loop or something. Okay. And it had something on there. And whatever was on there actually broke. And so I bought that little rubber pull tab, which I like a lot better. Okay. I forget who I bought that tab from, though. Okay. By the way, you mentioned that you you were still in your undergrad when you were building this, right? Yeah. Back in 2018. Yeah, so I built this on a college student budget. And the great thing about building it rather than build, buying a complete rifle was I got to order like every little piece yeah, one yeah, at a that's, time that's and have the satisfaction satisfied. of something coming in like every every month or I mean, every couple of weeks. It's not even like the consumerist satisfaction. Oh boy, my extractor spring got here. It's more like... I get to install this one part this week. And I know what it is. I don't yeah. like... I don't worry that... Oh no, I bought a PSA pre-built and they they hired like some sweatshop in Wuhan to build all the springs and it's it's falling apart. I mean not the PSA does it, but right. like some mystery meat manufacturer. I've seen guys, I've seen places that build quote competition rifles that had ten dollar eBay offset sites. Like I've seen these oh, yeah. sites on eBay and they're putting the fake sites. Like I look at them, I see, oh my god, that's the exact same one I just saw. Yeah. But, Total garbage. Yeah, so I have I have a decent amount of change in this, but it was built over the course of like a year. And so I was able to end up with something I actually really enjoyed. And you can really soften enjoy. the blow over the course of a year. $1,000 yeah. all at once seems like a big deal. $1,000 over the course of a year. Which is how I ended up spending a lot more money than I intended. <laughs> yeah. But on the good side, you like this gets forgotten about too. If you yeah. do a build, you don't have to throw out as much stuff. Yeah, and you'll this, eventually throw out something, but not as much. Yeah, like I never had um, a safety selector that I didn't like. I don't have a ten dollars charging handle run, rolling around somewhere. You know, like all the parts that are on it are just what I bought. Mm. Awesome, dude. Yeah, awesome. Dude.